This verse says that your Lord, and here your is in the singular to the Prophet Muhammad, your Lord said to the angels, and I'm not going to go into the liter, uh, uh, literal and figurative debates in between fundamentalists and between uh, traditionalists, because these debates are uh, endless. But what it says literally is your Lord, your Lord said to the angels, I am placing in the earth a caliph, a khalifa. The word khalifa in Arabic has several meanings. One of the meanings is somebody who actually stands in place and represents. Another is a steward, somebody who takes care of things. Like when, when you go on a journey, one of the things you say in, in the prophetic tradition is, Oh Allah, I'm leaving you as my caliph, my khalifa for my family and my wealth. So in other words, I'm leaving you to take care of them. So it says, I'm placing in the earth a vicegerent, sometimes it's translated, a caretaker, a steward. I'm placing in the earth this caliph. Alu, and the angels say, are you going to place in it one who sows corruption and sheds blood? And we praise your glory and, and deem you holy. And God's reply is, I know what you do not know. This question of the angels is a very inter interesting question. There's a lot of debate about why they asked this question. All the commentators are in agreement. They, they weren't disagreeing with God. They were just asking a question because in, in Muslim tradition, before humans were here, there were spirit, spirits that were here, and they sowed a lot of corruption. And then uh, there was another, Iblis was sent down to take control, and he did that. And so some say that the, the angels were looking at the previous inhabitants of the earth that sowed corruption and said, are you going to do this again? And, and the verse replies, I know what you do not know. But what's interesting in their question, they asked two things. Will you place in the earth one who sows corruption? Fasad is a beautiful word in Arabic. It has a very negative connotation, but it's beautiful in that it encompasses all of these different types of human uh, violence. It can actually mean pollution. It can mean corruption. It can mean uh, uh, something like when food goes bad, the Arabs say fasid, right? When, it, when it go, food goes bad. And the second thing they say, and will you shed blood? Our commentators say this refers to two components in the human being because we are triune creatures according to most of the ancient traditions. The, the Greeks had the, the, the soma, the psyche, and the pneuma. There are many trinities in the human uh, character. But the one here that the Muslims argue which is found also in the Greek tradition, is this idea of the human beings having this body that has appetites and it has emotions. And when the appetites take control, it sows corruption when they're not controlling the appetites. And when the emotion of anger takes control, the worst, the worst thing that can happen is, is murder. And very few people kill, uh, I mean, there are definitely psychopaths out there, but most murders happen in moments of rage. Most of that domestic violence happens in motions, uh, moments of rage when people are angry. A, a husband doesn't think, hmm, should I go hit her? That really be the best thing to do in this situation. It's usually uh, th this, this lower nature takes over. This irascibility in the soul takes over, and they do this. And so the appetites and, and the emotions are what cause this corruption and what cause this bloodshed. And so the Quran says that the reply to this is, I know what you don't know. 
What is that thing, and why is that word used twice? Because knowledge is used over 800 times in the Quran. It's one of the most uh, recurring words in the Quran as a thematic word, knowledge. I know what you don't know. And then it says, and we taught Adam the names. And this is the Adam that is Adam and Hawa. It's, it's the Adam before the separation. We taught Adam the names, all of them. And then we showed those names to the angels and, they sa and, and said to, that, to the angels, tell me the names of these things if you are truthful in what you've said. And they said, glory to you, we only know what you have taught us. We have no knowledge except what you have taught us and you are the wise and the all-knowing. And then it says to Adam, tell the names. And Adam told the names. And when he told the names, God says, didn't I tell you that I know the unseen of the heavens and the earth and I know what you were concealing, what you were revealing about man, that he will sow corruption and man will shed blood and what you were concealing, that this is a learning creature. It's a, it's, it's a creature that knows things and can acquire knowledge. And and then it goes on, the story goes on, and then he tells the angels to bow down to Adam because of this superiority, and then it says all of them bowed down except Iblis, he refused, and then it said, live in this garden, but don't go near this tree, and so most of you are familiar with that from the Christian tradition and the Jewish tradition, don't go near the tree, which is not in Islam considered the tree of no the knowledge of good and evil. It's just a test. Don't go near this tree. You can eat anywhere you want, but don't eat this tree. The devil says, this tree will give you eternal life, and it will give you a dominion that will never perish, and so you should eat from it. And so they eat from the tree. The woman's not blamed in the Quranic narrative. They both actually take responsibility, but what's interesting is they take responsibility. And the word that's used in the Quran that happens to them is azalluhuma shaitan like shaitan the devil tripped them caused them to trip so this what is known in 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 christianity as the original sin um the the fallen nature it, in in the quran it's described as a slip and now it says go down one of you an enemy to the other in other words the devil an enemy to man go down to the earth for a time, and guidance will come. Whoever follows that guidance, I, I will bless him, and if you don't, then uh, be forewarned. And so this is the, the, the narrative in the Quran of the human condition, that the human being has this nature that has knowledge, so the ability to reason, the ability to acquire knowledge, but it also has these, other, these two other components, these emotions that get the best of us and these appetites that sometimes overwhelm us. And obviously, uh, the, the two dominant ones are lust and, and the appetite for food. Hence, Imam al-Ghazali in his famous work called the Reviving the Sciences of Islam, Imam al-Ghazali says, he has a book called Breaking the Two Desires. Breaking the Two Desires. The desire of the stomach and the desire of the genitals. Because this is the source that if one can control these two elements in our nature, that we can live without sowing corruption and without shedding blood. But if we allow these two aspects of our nature to take over, we lose this ability. And according to the Quranic narrative, the way this is done is acquiring knowledge. And this is why the great Orientalist, Franz Rosenthal, who wrote a wonderful book called Knowledge Triumphant. He also translated Ibn Khaldun's extraordinary work, the Muqaddimah. Franz Rosenthal said, I know of no other civilization, and this is a world-class historian. He said, I know of no other civilization in human history that put the acquisition the development and the transmission of knowledge at the very center of their purpose. That this was the ethos of Islamic civilization. And this is why 
knowledge, particularly knowledge of language, although they had a great, great, great uh, interest in the quantitative sciences of mathematics. Obviously, we know algebra from uh, al-jabr, or taqabul, which is jabr is fixing broken things. And so algebra is that gibberish comes from uh, Jabir bin Hayyan, because some of the, the medievals found his work so difficult, they called it gibberish. The, the central study of Muslim civilization was the language arts. And the work that was done very early on in lexicons, in grammar, in rhetoric, are stunning. To this day, they're being studied with interest. And there's actually a PhD dissertation that a, a Palestinian wrote, arguing that a lot of Noam Chomsky's best ideas came out of Kufan and Basran grammarians from the third and fourth century. Whether that's true or not is for the academics to work out. Um, great minds do think alike. Fools seldom differ. Um, but great minds do think alike. So sometimes people just have uh, the same insights. Leibniz and Newton apparently discovered calculus at about the same time, um, which is quite extraordinary, but things do happen like that in the world. 